Okay, where do we start? What John's got to say is fantastic. What the other speakers have said so far today is also fantastic because we're getting the real information out. And we've lived in John's boxes for a very long time. I still live in one from time to time because I've had to put my tie on because I was a naval officer and therefore people expect to see me dressed properly. But when I mix with John, I'm not always in a shirt and tie. So it is breaking out of your comfort zone, and I'm very glad he called me. Now I'm going to stick on the subject I always talk about, which is subversion. If you want to beat these people, you need to understand how they're doing the things to you. And I already know by a couple of guys playing guitars and taking the mickey out of common purpose that the message is spreading as to how things are being done. But there's still some more bits of the jigsaw, and I want to show you what we are learning about the people that we have allowed to rule us and it's horrible to see and we need to do something about it so i thought i'd start with this picture um, we've been talking about westminster but a lot of people forget this building that's popped up this one here most of you should know it portcullis house and if you see it on a dark depressing rainy afternoon it looks like i don't know an abattoir. It's a very depressing building and if you go in there and you go through the airport security and then the police officer with his Uzi submachine gun eyes you up and down and I believe they're going to get the special body scanners so that you appear naked as you walk in there so they're obviously perverts as well. <laughs> but we've, we've all paid for this but I've been in there and it's an interesting experience. I met George Galloway, we went to tell him about Common Purpose and he was quite polite and he listened but he did nothing, which is fairly typical. So we think this building is quite special. John Harris reckons that this is the building where actually all of the meat of the European Union is created. Now I don't know whether it's true but I think it's an interesting idea because I don't believe the problem I don't believe anymore that the problem of the uni of the European Union is over there in Brussels I think it's in this country and I think a lot of the directives are starting off being built in this country and I believe the seat of the problems in this country and our guest speaker from America Anthony Hilda, I think, also believes the seat of the problems in this country. So it's unfortunate because we like to think we live in a green and pleasant land, but we're learning a few things about ourselves and we've got a bit of cleaning up to do. But once we do it, the house is going to be better. There's an angel in the sky there. <laughs> but this is true. For the, for the 2012 Olympics, some of the conspiracy theorists believe that they're going to put some holographic images in the sky for us to believe that there's been the second coming, and I bet that Mr Miliband's one of them. Is it going to work? Right, I think I've, I'll just go back a minute. Yeah. Okay, so we're here today in a court, effectively, because we thought the government needed to be put on trial. So I had to think through, and as an ordinary lay person, it seemed to me these are the key parts of a, a case. We've got to have a crime, we've got to have suspects, there's got to be a motive, they're going to use some form of weapon or vehicle and then there's going to be witnesses and evidence and that's my little summary of what's going on so we're talking about a crime of treason what does that mean well Albert can tell you in detail but all you need to know is you've been betrayed you've been betrayed in a way that leaves you vulnerable and it leaves your families vulnerable and your children vulnerable and your grandchildren vulnerable so this isn't some little crime this isn't something that's going to be swept under the carpet. This is a very big crime. It's a very serious crime. And we know who the suspects are because they're becoming arrogant. They're parading around in front of us. 
They fiddle their expenses, they have second homes and then they laugh about it. I actually think they've been duped, but we'll come back to that. But their motive, what is it? Money? It's always money initially, and after money, when you've got so much money you can't really use anymore, you have to go to the next level, which is a hunger for power. And that's where Mr Blair is at the moment. He wants power. Mrs Blair wants the houses and the money. He wants the power. And what are they doing? Well, what they're doing with their hands, they're not saying with their mouth. They're lying to us. They're deceiving us. It's subversive. It's all in the shadows. And they're attacking us in a number of areas. Economic, political, socially. And that's why life isn't fun anymore. It's getting hard work because they're making an impact. Witnesses, well there's millions of us, because we're living it, we're seeing the results day by day. And my father's just turned 90, and he's doing pretty well for a 90 year old, but he said to me about 18 months ago, Brian, do you think people have changed? And I thought about it for a while and I said, no, I think they have been changed. I don't think we've changed as people accidentally. I don't think youngsters get drunk through an accident. It's the fact that our whole society has been destabilised. So I said to him, I think that people have deliberately been changed. And I certainly think it now, having discovered common purpose. Is the evidence there? Well, the basic problem is there's too much. I couldn't bring all the boxes of papers with me, and if I brought them, I couldn't show them to you. I just can't get through them all. So we had a big problem saying, what are we going to cover in the conference? And we decided, rather than plugging through thousands of sheets of paper, we would try and give you a broad spectrum. And that's what I'm going to stick with. There's too much evidence. I thought I'd be a bit of a smart ass. Witnesses, there are witnesses who see the things, they're witnesses of fact, and then in courts you can also bring in people who are experts. So you can have a person who's an expert in fraud or the chemical industry. So I thought I'd be cheeky and say, I think I've got a bit of both, because I'm living what's happening, so I am a witness of fact, but perhaps due to my military training I've also got some expert skills which allow me I think it's run out of battery, no? Which allow me to actually analyse some of the things for you. Okay, if you want evidence, we can get some of it in the UK column. If you go onto the website CP Expose, there's hundreds of documents and there's soon going to be another update. But you can go on what do they know? You've only got to put in common purpose on the internet now and you'll find tons of information. So the evidence is pretty easy to find. Now I want to just get this business of people. I often say to the audiences, you're all nice, and I look around at the faces and make sure you're all nice. There's one or two of you probably not. But around us in history there's been some pretty nasty people. And there have been nations and groups of individuals that want to in invade this country whether it's the French, lovely people, of course, or the Spanish, or the Germans, or then we've got political categories like communists and fascists. And those last two are, a word, are words that people hide in. Because if you note at the moment, all of the media are running around screaming fascist, BNP fascists. We have anti-fascist, anti-Nazi league. But it's very interesting that if you go to Nazi or fascism and you go to communism, the root's the same. It's Marx. I don't want to get into the heavy side. It's a fact. It's easy. One takes you left in the circle. One takes you right. You end up at the same place. So when you start to see these names being banded around, just think of a guy called Karl Marx who helped start it all. Who funded him? So here's subversion. 
You're not going to attack somebody openly. You are going to do it in the shadows, in the dark. You want to slip the knife in and the people don't even realise they've been knifed. You want to get the vaccine in and they don't even realise they've had the jab, but they've got the flu. So you're going to do everything that you can in a hidden, deceitful way.